come to Ready for Change, the show where we don't just talk change, we live change. I am your host, Simone Albo, and I am so excited about this show that's on the May We Help You Network, and we are going to be talking about taking the stress out of change today. I'm a transformation and transition strategist, as well as a speaker, author, and mentor. And you may be wondering, well, what is a transformation and transition strategist? Well, I help people, primarily young people, women, business leaders, and professionals, to make the critical transitions that they need um, at those turning points in their life where they may feel stuck and they want to get their vision moving, they want to get their business moving, they want to get their life moving forward from the place where they are. And so usually when people want to make a transformation in their life, a significant change, there is a process, there's a movement between where you are and where you want to be. And a lot of times it is in the transition that we give up on the dream, we give up on what we're trying to do, we turn back to what we know is familiar or comfortable, and we don't move forward to where we need to be. One of the things that I've realized about change is that first and foremost, it can be very challenging, it can be very stressful, it can take a lot out of you. You can feel that you're losing more than you're gaining. But when you get to where you want to be, then you realize, oh my gosh, why didn't I take Why did I take so long to get to where I wanted to be? But the desire for something new has to be greater than the pain of where you are now. And I'll say that again because I know that is really profound. When I heard it the first time, I was blown away. The desire for where you want to be has to be greater than the pain of where you are now. The pain of where you are now is not going to move you toward where you want to be. And you may think, well, that doesn't make any sense because who wants to be in pain? Quite frankly, as human beings, we adjust ourselves to pain. When I talk about that, if you think about women, for instance, and the women can relate, we would endure the pain, most painful experiences. Let's use fashion, right? We'll say fashion hurts. We would get a new hairstyle that's pulled so tight that it's pulling our scalp, Uh, we can't sleep, we have to change positions and how we sleep because we want to preserve that hairdo. We will endure endure that pain for that hairdo. The same thing with shoes. If we've got a pair of shoes on that we think are really cute or really sexy, it doesn't matter how much those shoes may pinch our feet or maybe rubbing at the back of our heel, we would endure that pain. And it's the same thing. We, we do it on our jobs. We do it in our homes. We do it in our churches. We do it wherever we are. As human beings, we adjust to wherever we are. And so pain by itself is not a motivator for change. We just adjust ourselves to the pain that we're experiencing. So we have to have and a vision for where we want to go is not enough by itself. Because we can see the light. We know what it feels like when we take off our shoes, when we undo that hairdo, and we take off that tight outfit or whatever it is that's causing our pain. We know what it feels like to have been on a weight loss journey and to have lost weight and to feel how we feel. But what is it going to take for us to maintain that change or to go further, challenge ourselves deeper into another level of transformation? It is not just the vision. I've had visions in my head of of this beach body that I've been talking about for over 20 years or more. But it is the desire for that that's going to cause me to change my habits, to change my mindsets, to change my behaviors so that I can have what it is that I want to have, that I can make that transformation that I desire. And so Ready for Change radio show is going to delve into that uh, on a personal level, on a professional level, and even on a community level because many of us live in communities where we desire transformation in so many ways and in particular in our leadership and our leadership mindset and paradigm. And so I'm Simone Bo. I'm happy to be here with you. I'm excited about today's show, Taking the Stress Out of Change. 
We'll take a commercial break and come right back. Hi, I'm Rita Ricks, host of Spirit Journeys Radio, and I'm pleased to announce that discussions in February will focus on your purpose. Many of my clients often ask me questions like, what is my purpose? How do I find it? How will I recognize it? These are certainly appropriate questions to ask when you feel as though something is missing in your life. My role as life coach is to help you to begin to identify what your true purpose is and what gifts you already have to effectively live your purpose. I have some wonderful guests willing to share how they view their purpose and what purpose means to each of them. You will benefit greatly from hearing them. So join me every Tuesday night from 8 to 9 o'clock Eastern Standard Time. You can dial 646-652-2512 to listen and chat. I look forward to spending February with you. And I'm Rita, listening to your spirit. Are you frustrated, disappointed, discouraged with your life? Are you angry with God? What's holding you back from fulfilling your purpose? Are you struggling as a leader in ministry? Do you believe you have an end time calling? If you answered yes to any of these questions, tune in to The Waymakers on MWHY Radio Network every other Friday at 11 a.m. Eastern Standard Time. We are here to support you. Join us to get the answers that will prepare the way of the Lord in your life. If you're the parent of a child with behavioral challenges that has been suspended, expelled, or just not able to make it in a traditional school setting, there is an alternative. Call the Metropolitan Day School today. Licensed and accredited grades K-12, call 804-321-2595. Financial assistance and after-school programs are available. Let's turn this school year around right now at the Metropolitan Day School where Eagles soar. Call Ms. Thomas today, 804-321-2595. This is Capri Smith, your uncuffed living expert. I want to take a moment and speak to my women entrepreneurs. If you have your own business card in the name of your business, but you struggle when someone asks what it is you do, that is a problem. If you are not making money that's going to build your legacy and sustain your family, that is a problem. I invite you to hop on over to caprismith.com Join my free newsletter, and while you're there, schedule your strategy session. I want to help you uncover some things that you should already know. I spent 20 years perfecting my craft, and I'm willing to share all of what I know with you today. If you're not living uncuffed, you're just not living. And if you're cuffed in your business, your clients will know that, and they won't invest in you. So let's connect. Until next time, have an awesome day. Welcome to Ready for Change Radio, and I am your host, Simone Alvo, Transformation and Transition Strategist. So excited about this show and the guests that we're going to be talking to tonight. We are sharing on the topic, taking the stress out of change. And of course, you know that change is a stressful, can be a very stressful process for people. And it's something that people really resist is change a lot of times because of how it makes them feel, what happens to them when they go through change. And so we're really excited about tonight's topic and what we're going to hear from our guests as well. We want to encourage you to get your radio app today from maybe help you network in the Google Play Store or the Amazon App Store or on the network website where you can get regular updates on our shows and our hosts and our great lineup. So it's my pleasure now to introduce our guest 
for tonight, and certainly she is well able to deal with this topic. She is a health and wellness coach, and I'll call her a guru, uh, an award-winning entrepreneur, a television host and producer, and she's the author of the number one Amazon best-selling um, book, uh, The Crash That Altered My Life. I cannot wait to hear about that, because when we talk about change, it, change usually comes as a catalyst. Something usually drives the change to cause us to move in a particular direction. And one story that I've heard uh, over the course of, of my experiences in dealing with change and transformation is that pain is not a catalyst for change by itself. And normally people will say, well, once you get a picture or a vision of where you want to go, then you automatically move towards that. And that is a myth as well. Because just because you see something that's better doesn't necessarily mean you're going to move toward it. Just because where you are is painful is not necessarily going to make you move towards something better. It's like what people say when they question why people are stay in, a, in an abusive relationship. Why don't you just leave? It's never that easy. There's always those gray areas, always those what ifs and the fears and, and the doubts and what's going to happen if I move toward the new thing, which would represent something that's better for me. And so we're going to get into all of that tonight. But so happy to welcome our guest, Cherie Cofield of Cherie Cofield International. Welcome to the show. Hello. Thank you so much for having me, Simone. I appreciate it. Yes, we're so happy that you are here tonight and to talk in your area of expertise about um, stress management and how that relates to change. We're talking about taking the stress out of change. So first of all, tell us a little bit about yourself and about that book. I really want to hear more about that, the crash that altered my life. Okay. Well, first of all, I'm a mom. I am a number one Amazon best-selling author. I'm the founder of Sheree Cofield International, and it's a health and wellness company, but we specifically delve in on stress management because regardless of the walk of life that you're from, regardless of where you live, what kind of car you drive, how much money is in the bank, we all have stress. And you can never completely get rid of stress, but you can manage it to the point that it doesn't adversely affect your health and you're not affecting others around you because you're irritable, because you're stressed out. So uh, The Crash That Altered My Life is my number one Amazon bestseller. And I, I heard you talking about change and how sometimes change can be difficult. But sometimes change is unexpected. Sometimes it's just thrown your way. And that was how I had a crash. I had a financial and emotional crash. Um, after a uh, marriage of 14 years abruptly ended. And uh, that was totally out of my control. Sometimes people make a decision that, oh, I need to make a change, but this was a change that was thrown on me and I had to react so that my health and my wellness would not be affected by that sudden um, undesired change. Wow. And so how did that alter your life and how were you able to transition through the changes that that brought? Because obviously those are all overwhelming changes that you would have had to experience. Not just the relationship, but you said that you were a mom, so that dealing now transitioning with your children and helping them to transition through that uh, very serious change. How did you handle yeah. all that? Well, it wasn't easy. So anybody that tells you that change is easy, they are not telling the truth. <laughs> change, <laughs> is, <laughs> change is very difficult, whether it's a change that you want to make yourself or whether it's a change that's just thrown upon you. So as I mentioned, I, I was married for 14 years. We had this very lucrative business. We were making six figures in less than a year together in business. And um, one day he just decided after 14 years that he didn't want to be married anymore, and he just abruptly left. So it's almost, it's almost as if I lost a mate in death. I liken it to that because when someone, you know, when you have a close relative or family member that suddenly dies or passes away, it, you go through a lot of different stages. So I went through those stages. I went through the stages of denial um, and then anger and then acceptance. And 
the funny part is <clears throat> I thought my life was going pretty well because I was in my 30s, and so I'm like, hey, you know, we have the big house, we have all the cars, we have the business, we, we're financially stable, we have the two kids, and I never wanted to be a single mom. Um, so I made sure that I lived my life accordingly so that when I did have kids that my children would be out of wedlock. And that sudden change where he decided that he no longer wanted to be married or be in a family setting, that just that just took all of my whole thing that I had built up in my life that I didn't want to happen was now before me, and this was a sudden change that I had to now adapt and adjust to. So I ended up being a single mom um, of two boys. So now not only am I saying, okay, it's, it's affecting my life, but it's affecting the life of these two boys because... Now I'm a single mom that has to raise two men to be upstanding and that would never do um, to their families what their dad had done to our family. So not only was I dealing with my own emotional uproar, but I had to deal with um, my children and now accepting the fact that I was now a single mom and I had to handle finances alone and um, had to actually file bankruptcy in order to uh, basically survive and uproot my family and move back to another state. Uh, so all those changes came abruptly. So if you can only imagine the insurmountable amount of stress that I was under going through that entire ordeal. Exactly. That's what I'm thinking, because each one in and of itself is very traumatic. And mm -hmm. so that's the kind of thing that people are really deathly afraid of having to face. And so are there ways that we can prepare ourselves, because you mentioned those things that we can control. Those are the planned changes that we decide, you know, that I want to lose 50 pounds. And we make a decision, that I'm going to do those things that are required for me to make the change to lose the 50 pounds. But then there are some things that happen. Are there things that we can do to prepare ourselves for those sorts of unexpected Expected changes. I know that in, in your profession, you hear about things like coping, um, finding mm -hmm. coping skills, or even something that I've just recently been um, studying is resilience. You know, how do you build within yourself uh, a, a mindset of positivity, and how do you build the strength within yourself, a capacity to handle difficult situations whenever they arise? Well, uh, like you said, with any change, um, the first thing you have to do is understand what it is that you're changing or what the change is and then why there's a need for the change or why that change happened. So that would be basically uh, my change was abrupt and it was uh, thrown upon me. So, okay, what am I changing? Okay, my entire life is changing because now I'm a single mom. Now I'm going to be living as a single woman and I have to handle the finances alone. So that's that's what we're changing. And then why is there a need for change? The need for change was because now I was a single parent household. But when you're talking about changes, you know, that you want to do, like maybe the weight loss or I want to change the way I think about things, just think about what it is that you're changing. Are you changing your mindset? Are you changing your habits? What is it that you're changing? And then why is there a need for that change? So let's say if you're trying to do weight loss. What are you changing? You're changing your outlook on dieting. You're changing your lifestyle, how you're eating and, and exercising. And then why is there a need for change? Because you want to live a healthy lifestyle. You don't want to stay overweight because, you know, it's going to attack your organs eventually and it's going to cause health issues. So the first thing you have to do is change the way you think about it. So change your mindset with everything. Um, I just had a call with uh, my sister earlier, and we were talking about being optimistic. optimistic. A lot of people are so pessimistic. Automatically, we take things to the worst-case scenario. Um, you know, positive thoughts, positive actions bring positive results. So everything starts in the mind. So it, it could be our thinking that's holding us back from the change that we want to make. So what we can do is try to have our positive thoughts outweigh those negative, which is very, very difficult when you live in such a negative society. So we have to make our minds over. And, and tell ourselves, hey, it's not as bad as we're thinking that it is. So, you know, again, knowing what change is needed and then the reason for that change will help you to have a positive outlook. And nine times out of ten, when you go through that thought process first, 
you stick with whatever that change is that you're trying to make. Right. So how do you help people move through resistance? Because we all tend to resist what we have to change. You know, so you talked about changing habits and changing mindsets, but sometimes those things become a stronghold in our life. It, it becomes our normal. It becomes this is what I'm used to, this is what I'm comfortable to with, and so it's very hard for me to let that go. I remember when I went on my wellness journey that I'm still on, you know, and you have days where you really are not doing what you're supposed to do, but I remember mm -hmm. that. You know, there were things that I had to do drastically to to really jumpstart what I wanted to do. And one of those things that I made the conscious decision to do was to give up meat and chicken and all the things that, you know, we generally like to eat. Uh, for me, chicken was a stronghold. <laughs> but, after I, <laughs> but after I realized, especially chicken wings, oh, my gosh, it was, it was really terrible. But after... <laughs> I realized the the impact that chicken had on my body, but it wasn't until I actually went through the pain of that and I recognized okay. what it was to me, then it caused me to be more disciplined about the change. But there was a resistance at first. And then there was this shortcut mentality thinking that, well, I don't really need to give this up. I can still get by maybe if I minimize or if I do some things to short circuit what what I'm trying to change uh, without really giving up everything. How do you help people to work through that? Well, the the first thing I say is don't try to attack it, you know, all as one big project. So so if you look at something and, and you see it, oh, my God, I'm going to stop eating meat, automatically your mind starts going to every kind of meat that you can't have. <laughs> and what you do... Yeah, exactly. You're like, oh, my God, I can't have any meat. And, and it, it seems like so overwhelming. So you start off small. With any goal, you can't just, just jump right in. You have to take small chips at it. So, so maybe you'll cut out beef first. Okay, I won't eat any beef. Okay, let's, let's master that first. Okay, next, okay, let me add pork. So now I'm not eating any beef or pork. So I only eat chicken and I only eat turkey. Okay, then after you master that, then go, okay, I'm not eating any more turkey. So we'll say chicken for last since you said that was your favorite. <laughs> so, so you just, you understand what I'm saying? You just take little pieces, little chunks to make that change. Don't tackle the problem or the change all as one big project. Break it down. Make it simple for yourself. This week, I'm not going to do this. I'm, this is how I'm going to start working towards my change. It, it, it's a process. You can't just go and say, I'm going to change something. Otherwise, you're going to fail every time. So that's the same way I'm going to go back to dieting because that's probably one of the hardest things that people have, dieting and smoking. So let's say dieting, you're saying, I want to lose 20 pounds. Okay, I'm going on a diet. Automatically, the word diet, what's the first three letters? Die, right? So you think you're going to die because you're on a diet. <laughs> you think you're going to die because you're on a diet. And automatically, what do you do? Automatically, when you hear someone say they're on a diet, oh, my God, I mean, you can't have this, you can't have that, you can't have this. No, think about it differently. It's not what I can't have. These are the things I'm going to eat less of. These are the things I'm going to, gonna, you know, not do as often. So maybe you may say, hey, this week I'm not going to drink any sodas. I'm not on a diet. I'm going to not just not drink as many sodas because sodium, sodas are full of sodium and that, that helps you, that, that keeps the fluid on you. And so you could be having some extra five pounds just from water weight. So just think of it in small chunks instead of one big overwhelming task. And just like smoking. So if you're, if you're smoking a pack a day, but you really want to stop smoking, maybe reduce it by one cigarette each week or two cigarettes each week until you get to the goal where you want to be. So, so that, that helps to take the stress out of <laughs> trying to make a drastic change or a big change in your life. Take it slow. You know, every little step gets you closer to where you want to be. Exactly. I can totally relate with that because even, like I said, in my journey, my goal was to lose like 120 pounds. And so to, to hear that is very daunting and very intimidating. And mm -hmm. the first explanation, especially if you're a chronic diet or you've always had struggles with weight all of your life, you automatically think, well, that's something that I just can't do. And so mm -hmm. for me, it was just taking it one day at a time, saying I'm not dieting, I'm making lifestyle changes, 
and I'm doing exactly. it one day at a time. I didn't give myself a deadline. I said, however long this takes me is however long this is going to take. And, so, and don't be um, so hard on yourself. Don't be hard on yourself if you if you mess up. Just you know, the good thing about it is that uh, life is too short to be stressing over mess that you didn't do right. So guess what? You woke up the next day. Do it over. You get a do over. So start it over again. If you messed up, okay. You know what? I didn't. I didn't do what I said I was going to do. I didn't meet my goal yesterday. That's why you want to make it a weekly goal instead of saying, oh, a day. You know, you can have daily goals, but also do weekly goals. That way, if you if you do have a setback, you're not throwing yourself off for a whole week, or you're not setting yourself back from the next goal. So do it at, like a week is a good way to to kind of gauge whatever change you're trying to make, right. and just just do do things that constantly remind you of why you're doing the making the changes. Take sticky notes if you need to. Put them all over your house. You know, you 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 are important. You are enough. You matter. Your health is at jeopardy. You know, put your, put yourself visual reminders to keep you on track to whatever goal it is that you're trying to reach with that change. Exactly. And the thing is that I realize that a lot of it is really mental. It, it's not even about yeah. the weight or the actual change. It's really about you as a person uh-huh. and changing mindset. Can you, can you talk yeah. a little bit about that? Yes, as we mentioned before, you know, it's that, it's that mindset. Everything starts in the mind. So we can make a mountain out of a molehill. I know you probably heard that statement before. You're making a mountain yeah. out of a molehill. Mm-hmm. So, again, when you think about what you're trying to change, you can, you can make it seem like something that's so unreachable, or you can break it down into small tasks to say, hey, this is doable. I'm worth this change. I need to make this change. Again, it goes back to why you're making that change. Why are you making it and why why is there a need for that? Because if you don't see the need for that change, you're never going to meet the goal. Exactly. Because I realized that, you know, I had to think about, well, why do you feel that when you get emotional, I want to talk about that in, in a second right after this, but why is it that when you are feeling some sort of emotion that you've connected that with the need to eat? When you're not really hungry, you don't really desire the thing that you're going after, but there's a, an emotional connection to how I'm feeling and the response. Mm-hmm. And so I've realized that you, you have to change the response. So when I drive past KFC, just because I smell the chicken doesn't mean that <laughs> I really want chicken at that time. <laughs> you know, it's just mm-hmm. a And so it really causes me to dig deeper and to examine your behavior and what's triggering the actions that you're taking. Mm-hmm. Well, think about it. When you're eating, how do you feel? When you eat a good meal, how do you feel? You feel you feel good. It just makes you be like, oh, my goodness, that food was so good. And then you want to lay back and relax and let it marinate in your belly. It's called comfort. Yeah. You want comfort. So, so it's stressful. So that's that's the, that's one source of comfort. Yours may be food, but somebody else's may be wine or dessert, or it just depends on what makes you feel good. Like I love to eat. I love to eat. <laughs> if they ever, if anything ever happens to my tongue, I'm in trouble because I love to eat, and I feel good when I eat good food. So that's my mm-hmm. source of comfort. I may go in there and be like, oh. I'm so upset. Let me eat some ice cream, you know. So it, it, it's just a source of comfort. <laughs> so that's why people tend to run the food. Mm-hmm. All the world's problems, I think. <laughs> yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So it's whatever provides that source of comfort, and it, it, it's that feel-good moment. And, and a lot of times it could be food, it could be alcohol, it could be, you know, different things that people cling to. Some people... When they're upset, they run to the gym because they want that feel good. They want those endorphins released because exercise and releases those endorphins and, and it makes them feel good. Where other right. people, oh, I, I like to just eat. Like, you know, <laughs> exactly. the eating sounds good to me. <laughs> exactly. So it's each, person's, it's each person's reaction to stress, um, but just knowing that you are in control. You're, you are in control. Nobody else is in control but you. So you decide how much you change, you decide when you change, you decide whether it's important or not to change, and you decide the necessary steps that it's going to take to change. You, re- you decide your reaction to that change. So if you go in thinking positively, 
this is a small thing. I know I have the willpower to get this done. You're going to get it done. But if you go in thinking negatively, you're like, oh, God, I don't want to do this, but I have to uh, humdrum negative, then you're going to get negative results. You're not going to stick with it. Exactly. And I think a lot of times people do feel powerless. Um, I don't know where that comes from in our psyche, but, you know, we, we tend to feel that everything is outside of our control, that everything happens to us mm -hmm. and that we're waiting for someone to give us power. So even for those of us who are in this, this movement of personal development and empowerment, I think it's important for us to share with our audiences that empowerment is really not anyone giving you power. It's just creating an awareness in you that you have power and that you have control. And it's you taking you know, ownership so of your power. That's right. Exactly, and being accountable to, to the decisions that you make and the choices that you make. Yeah. So let's talk about the emotional triggers that, that change can bring and how those emotions can cause stress for us. Uh, what are some of the emotions that come up in us during times of change? Oh, my goodness. Uh, nervousness. <laughs> some people get so nervous to the point that they are they, they start to have palpitations, heart palpitations and, and sweaty palms. Um, they lack concentration. And actually, stress has been known. The stress of change can even cause confusion, sleep, um, uh -huh. sleeplessness. Um, it, can, it can cause substance abuse, uh, depression, isolating yourself, irritability. Um, you can be so concerned about making that change that you're stressing yourself out to the point that you become irritable and have outbursts, and you can, have, you can even become violent. So it's so important to know your reactions to stress so that you can hit it off before you get to the point where it's uncontrollable. Right. And so how, what are some ways that people can handle stress uh, when they're going through times of change? Because we know, again, these emotional triggers that come up for us, uh, a big one is fear, and as you said, anxiety, you know, being nervous. Um, you know, you even doubt yourself and, and you can come up with self-esteem and self-confidence can, can be shattered in, in those times. Um, people feel guilty, you know, I could have done enough, I really should have done this, if I had done that, then this wouldn't have happened. You know, so how how do we find ways to, to deal with stress uh, when we're going through change? Well, one thing with anything, when you're going through stress, change, uh, work projects, whatever you're doing, you have to get enough rest. We always talk about changing your mindset because that's the biggest thing. Positive thoughts, positive actions, positive results. The, the next thing I would say is proper rest and sleep. At least get eight hours of sleep every night, and that's hard for a lot of people to do. We, we, we're so sleep deprived because there's always something to do in the world. There's always something to do. So try to get as much sleep as possible because when you're getting that proper sleep and your body is going through the realms of sleep, like it should, you're able to think through the process of the change better. You're able to have clearer thoughts. You're able to make better decisions. So sleep is so important. Sleep and rest is so important. Um, next, I would say proper diet. Mm -hmm. Sorry, I didn't mean diet is next. But, um, That's okay. I wanted to touch that a little bit about sleep because I think sometimes that is a reaction to stress is insomnia or sleeplessness. So how, um, what would you advise someone who is saying, well, I just can't sleep. My, my mind is racing. I have so much on my mind. I'm trying to figure out what to do with my next move. What do I do next? How do I respond to this? There's just so much going on that I feel that I can't sleep. What would you tell that person? I would tell them one, one way is to, one thing that they could do for sleeplessness is take a herbal bath. And it doesn't necessarily mean that you have to have go out and buy these natural herbs from the store or whatever. You can actually take an herbal tea bag. <laughs> so if you have herbal tea in your home, you right. can actually you can actually take that herbal tea bag and run it under the water while you're running your bath, mm. and just let the tea bag run in the water so you're getting those same herbs. So maybe get you know the the relaxing teas. You want to use those. You can you can use that and then soak in the tub for at least twenty minutes. 
and that has multiple uh, different effects for it, but that will help you to relax, rejuvenate. And then um, earlier today I, I learned a new tip for relaxing and rejuvenating your mind and body is a champagne or a red wine bath, which I had never heard of before. And I'm oh, going to try it. it. Yeah, champagne, that's what it's kind of expensive, right? But it's okay. They say take one glass of wine, you run it under your running bath water, um, and the red wine has antioxidants in it. Um, it also has uh, the champagne or and or the red wine has anti-aging properties in it. It also helps you to relax, rejuvenate, unwind um, while you're taking that bath, or even an Epsom salt bath because it's helping helping you to relax and rejuvenate your mind and body. So I would say if you can't sleep, take take a bath. Normally, you know, it helps to relax the muscles. Once those muscles and all are relaxed and, and, and your mind is kind of clear, then when you go lay down, you, you typically can sleep after that. Right. Well, that sounds like a, a good Valentine's tip, too. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yes, yes, yes. Exercise is also good. Um but sometimes when you're releasing those endorphins, it's going to wake you up a little bit. So it, it could have a twofold effect. So don't do so much exercise that you're wide awake. <laughs> but sometimes right. you can do a little exercise right. or watch a movie or something. Right. Mm -hmm. What about music? Because I've heard some schools of thought that say, you know, you shouldn't listen to music or have the TV on when you're trying to get to sleep. And a lot of people feel that they can't get to sleep if they don't have those things playing, something, some background noise going on. Um, what do you find works? I, w I would recommend the music before the television um, when you're trying to go to sleep. And the whole thought process behind television not being on while you're trying to go to sleep is that the light from the television, it, it hinders the absorption of melatonin in your body. And melatonin is known for sleep and helping, helping you to sleep and get a good night, adequate sleep at night. So that light, any light at all, interferes with the absorption of melatonin in your body. So I would use the music, but don't put on music that's going to keep you jumping and bopping and you want to get out the bed and dance. You want to put on soothing music, um, slow songs, or something that's going to actually kind of lullaby you to sleep, something to help, like, rock you right on to sleep. <laughs> so put on some, right. you know, some soft music that you may enjoy. And then eventually you'll probably fall asleep. And I would say when you feel yourself starting to fall asleep, maybe just reach over and just cut it off. That way you have uninterrupted sleep. But I, I would definitely suggest music over television. Okay. And I know um, I had interrupted you earlier. You were getting ready to talk about diet as one way of relieving stress during times of change. Can you continue with that and, and any other uh, recommendations that you have? Sure. So So proper diet. Okay. So... The the biggest thing is to try to keep your sugar level at a steady rate. So you you want you don't want your sugar too high, you don't want your sugar too low. But what happens when your sugar plummets because you're not eating because you're feeling stressed out, your sugar level drops, it causes you to be irritable, you're you're just you're out of whack, you're not able to make proper decisions. And with change you have to be able to make proper decisions. You have to be able to understand what you're doing and why you're doing it. So make sure you keep your sugar levels at a at a regular. So you may want to you know try to at least eat something every couple hours if you're not eating full meals. Avoid salt because again that's going to uh, retain fluid in your body. Avoid alcohol. A lot of times people think, oh, I'll drink I'll drink some alcohol because that's going to reduce my stress. When actually it can increase your stress if you're drinking too much alcohol. Now a glass of red wine or something is okay. It's good for your heart. But too much overconsumption is not good. It, it actually adds to your stress instead of decreasing your stress. And then exercising regularly. Um, again, those endorphins are released when you exercise. You feel good. And then, of course, you're going to have the results of working out. Your, your body's going to look good. So if you look good, you feel even better. <laughs> so exercising <laughs> regularly. <laughs> and, that, and actually while you're exercising, you can actually be thinking through your problem or your change you know, while you're working out. And if you're frustrated, you can take your frustration out on those machines. <laughs> <laughs> exactly, and not on the people around you. <laughs> and not on the people around you. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> and, I mean, we all have limitations. We all have we all have uh, trials. We all have things that we are dealing with. So, you know, it, it never helps to talk to somebody who is going through change or someone who who's maybe been in the situation that you're in. Talk to somebody. We all have personal struggles. And, you know, it, it's not easy, and, and it's hard to do it alone. So, so definitely adopt, you know, your, your, your friends, your family, someone you can talk to, 
to talk to them and see, you know, maybe they have some helpful suggestions on how you can um, make your change a little easier. But then know your limitations at the same time. Sometimes you may have to step away from whatever change it is that you're trying to do just for a moment and come back to it. So if it's becoming too overwhelming for you, then I would say step away from it for a day and then come back. That's why it's good to do weekly goals instead of daily goals. You can have those daily goals, but you won't be as hard on yourself, you know, if you make it a weekly goal and you say over the week, how did I, how did I measure up over the week instead of from day to day. We fall short every day. So just know your limitations, and when it's time to step away from that change, then, you know, you may have to step away from it on Tuesday and come back to it on Wednesday. And then at the end of that seven days, go back and evaluate how you did over that week for your goal instead of day to day. Great. Well, I am certainly enjoying this conversation with you, Cherie, from Cherie Cofield International. And it's been so hard to tear away for a break, but we are going to take a commercial break right now and we will come back and let people know how to find you and, and wrap up this conversation talking about the importance of coaching and the importance of taking the stress out of change. We'll be right back. Most people are held captive by being an employee or self-employed. Heroes Academy helps break these chains that bind them. Our financial school has two courses of study. First, one for people who want to transition to become business owners. And the second, for students who want to learn to become an investor. For more information, please go to HeroACAD.com. Cap City, get ready. EJ for the Top presents a Valentine evening of smooth jazz and classic soul. Featuring Wade Elliott, former lead singer of Blue Magic. Wade Elliott of Blue Magic. Also performing, it's the jazz band Smooth Concert, along with comedians Black Magic and Tin Man. That's Valentine's Day, February 14th at the top, located at 10 Walnut Alley in Chaco Bar. It's Wade Elliott, former lead singer of the legendary Blue Magic, performing all of their hits. It's the best jazz in Richmond from the Smooth Concepts Band and Show, along with comedian Black Magic and Tin Man, with your host, the Butterfly Queen. That's Valentine's Day, Saturday, February 14th, showtime, 5 p.m. Tickets are just $25 in advance, $35 at the door. For more information, call 647-2592. That's 647-2592. Valentine's Day. Spend the night with Wade Elliott of Blue Magic, live at the top. 10 Walnut Alley and Chaco Bottom. Don't miss it. The exclusive Blacklist, February 12th, featuring delectable wines from African-American wineries. Meet jazz legend Marcus Johnson and She Crazy Wines, Gwen Hurt, and others. Delicious food provided by a sponsor, Boss Tea Catering, as well as live jazz. February 12th at the picturesque Virginia War Memorial. Tickets are $75 for this historical and trailblazing event. Become a part of history. Get your tickets today at www.thevinewineclub.com or by calling 804-993-4130. You don't want to miss this. Hi, my name is Leticia M., owner of May We Help You Network. I want to thank you for joining us and enjoying our host here on MWHY Radio Network. Please visit us online at MWHYradio.com and like us on Facebook.com forward slash MWHYradio. Tune in to learn more about our hosts and upcoming contests and our TV programming that will be coming to you soon. MWHY Radio, bringing together business, community, and you. Welcome back to the show. You are tuned in to Ready for Change. I'm your host, Simone Elbo. So excited to have a health and wellness expert with us, Cherie Cofield from Cherie Cofield International. Really happy about the conversation tonight. There's just so much information, so much to take in. Welcome back to the show, Sheree. 
Thank you. Thank you for having me. I'm having a blast. <laughs> so am I. And so as we wrap up the show, I'd like for you to give any closing thoughts about taking the stress out of change and then tell us how we can reach you and get a copy of the book. I'm really so thrilled about that. I, I want to read it myself. Oh, thank you. Well, my, my concluding comment is that change is forever taking place no matter where we are in the world. So just like the skin we're in, stress is something that we just can't shake off. So you're going to have stress with changes that you're going to make. It's here to stay, but it's our responses, our reactions, our recovery from the stressful situation of change that can be adjusted. It's just going to require some discipline and determination on your part, and you can change whatever it is that you anticipate changing. Absolutely. I totally agree. As you said earlier, we have control. We are in control. We have the power. We have the power, yes. And I can be reached. Uh, my website is com. I'll spell it. It's C-H-E-R-E-C-O-F as in Frank, I-E-L-D, International spelled out for Cherie Coalfield International dot com. Um, you can reach me on all your social media sites as Cherie Coalfield I N T, that's uh, short for International. Cherie Coalfield I N T. And make sure when you go on my website, you guys take the free stress quiz on there. Let you know where you are with the stress in your life. And um, sign up for my uh, newsletter that comes out um, where I give out free stress tips uh, and ways to make you have a happy, healthy, harmonious lifestyle. So please look me up. I'm on YouTube, Facebook, all the social media sites. Be sure to look me up, com. Thank you so much. And we definitely are going to take advantage of the resources. I tell you, I'm just really excited about this. I'm excited about this show because I really believe that Ready for Change is going to help people um, through their transformation experiences and through the transitions that you have to make in order to transform, whether that's mental, emotional, physical, uh, professional, personal, whatever it is that you have to, to transition through to get to your best self, to get to your ideal state, to get to your vision. I believe that we will offer you the tools and the type of people like Cherie to give you the information you need to help you through whatever transition you're working through. So, again, thank you so much for joining us, Cherie. Thank you. Uh, thank you for having me. <laughs> we look forward to more chats like this in the future. Yes, please. I would love to. <laughs> thank you so much. And as we take right. another short commercial break, we will be right back to wrap up our show, Ready for Change. To all of my female entrepreneurs, it's time to expand your region and business profits. Are you networking in the same locale and viewing the same guest list over and over? Do you find your colleagues are referring new business and its clients that you already have in your portfolio? Are you industry stagnant? And are your social groups and events filled with the same people? If you answer yes to just one of these questions, it's time to expand internationally. You are cordially invited to petition for attendance to an all-female exclusive and private event featuring the Power of 52 Women, the East Coast International Business Symposium, hosted by rock star entrepreneur and international business consultant Erica A. Murray and multimedia distributor and expert Letitia M. And moderator, Ms. Joan Henry of the Women's Entrepreneur Expo, beginning February 28, 2015 in Baltimore, Maryland, March 28th in New York, New York, April 18th in Washington, D.C., May the 23rd in Atlanta, Georgia, June the 20th in Boston, Massachusetts, and September, Africa. If you are serious about your business, don't miss this event. Go to www.thepowerof52women.com for more information. Once again, go to www.thepowerof52women.com and register today. This is an event you don't want to miss. Hi, this is Benita with Off the Vine. Join us on Fridays at 3 o'clock for fun talk about wine. This season, I'm going to put this little sommelier certification to work as we expand the conversation to talk about beer and spirits too. 
meet more exciting special guests, and you never know just who may show up at the studio. Off the Vine with Benita on the Maybe Help You Radio Network, giving you something to whine about. This is Tom. And it's Larry. And we're coming out with a new show called Pizza, Money, and Sarcasm. You can join us every Wednesday from 11 to noon. And that is starting August 13th. Where we'll be interviewing people. We'll also be taking phone calls and debating topics like... Parenting. Sports. Life. Food. Politics. How I'm always right. How I'm always right. Your suits. Your not suits. <laughs> Pizza. P- Pizza's a good one. Yeah. Gardening. Ashland. Chesterfield. Richmond. New Jersey. Virginia. Cubs. I want to thank you for joining us on Ready for Change. This has been a phenomenal show. We are so happy that Cherie Cofield from Cherie Cofield International was able to join us tonight as our special expert guest talking about taking the stress out of change. Tune in to Ready for Change on the May We Help You Network where we're going to talk more about personal and professional and corporate transformation and transition. I'm your host, Simone Elbow. Join us next time on Ready for Change, where we don't just talk change, we live change.